coming, is it? Okay. Um, yeah, that's a slide. Okay. Uh, so, hello, everyone. Uh, let me, okay. I was supposed to introduce you, so I, I thought I was going to see your name out there. So, you're Khan Yuan. Yeah. And, okay. You don't have your title on there? I have a title in the following okay. page. So, Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm Khan Yuan from Indiana University. Uh, and uh, I'm glad here to. Um, present uh, the work of our group. Um, it's not actually attack related, so I'm not sure why it was arranged in this session. I just hope uh, I would not bore you. Um, so it's about the uh, abuse of cloud hosting service. Um, the cloud hosting service is the web hosting service running on the infrastructure of uh, cloud storage. So the user of cloud hosting service um, only need to upload their resource to the cloud and the service provider would uh, assign a URL to each resource. So with that URL, anyone can access that resource uh, remotely through HTTP traffic. And so cloud hosting service actually provides a um, reliable, scalable, and uh, flexible solution to the online content publishing. Uh, according to Amazon, there are um, currently more than two trillion objects um, stored in their S3 server. So that's a huge number, uh, such a huge number, so it indicates that it's very popular in these years. Um, unfortunately, such popularity of cloud hosting service also um, draw the attention of the malicious uh, actors from uh, in the game of web industry. Apparently, they find this is very desirable. The reason is threefold. First of all, um, everyone who uses the cloud hosting service would get a legitimate IP address and a domain name for their resource. So, in the case of malicious content, this a legitimate IP and domain would help them to hide in the uh, in web, and uh, it makes it harder to be blocked with IP and the domain blacklist. Um, it even makes the attacker more deceitful. One case we find in our research is a um, is a fish uh, website impersonating Google's login page, and it was hosted on the uh, domain of Google Drive. So. It makes a lot of sense for the victim to log in his um, Google account on the domain name belongs to the same company. Um, second of all, um, according to the previous researchers, uh, the malicious actor actually changed their infrastructure very frequently. This can be seen from the uh, shorter lifetime of malicious websites. So they are looking for some flexible solution for their infrastructure and the Pay as you go pricing model uh, adapted by most cloud hosting service is what is exactly what want, uh, what they want. Um, lastly, it's more economic. That is important because the malicious actors can thus um, afford to build more complicated infrastructure to avoid detection. On the other hand, um, finding those malicious uh, repositories in the cloud. Uh, in our research, we call it the bars because it's short for bad repository. So finding these bars are really uh, complicated and uh, hard. One challenge is uh, there is no such list of existing um, cloud repositories for your scanner to directly work on. The other problem is uh, the attacker may use some special hosting and uh, evasion strategies. For example, we find in our research that um, some Sometimes the malicious actor distribute their malicious content into uh, a few different uh, cloud repositories. And each of these repositories looks really innocent until you combine them together to, um, to conduct a malicious behavior. And the third um, challenge is the diversity of the rules a bar can play in the attack. A bar can be a, a redirector or the um, repository for images or the uh, repository for the malicious binary. So this diversity actually makes it more complicated to detect a bus uh, in the cloud. So, um, um, so 
now that the, um, the, the, the cloud hosting service is so desirable for the malicious actors, and um, it's not easy to find them. So uh, there is an increasing number of bars online. According to a article by, uh, from Threat Intelligence, and there are more actually a more malicious um, malicious content distributors are using commercial cloud to do doing their uh, malicious uh, career. So despite a few blog posts um, that um, talking about the um, talking about the cloud hosting abuse, there is no systematic research has been conducted uh, to address this emerging security issue, nor is there any existing approach that is able to detect um, those mal malice lurking in the cloud efficiently. Therefore, uh, the two questions uh, are remain unsettled. The first is how to detect the, and collect bars effectively. And the second is what is the scope and the magnitude of um, cloud hosting abusing. So to answer these two questions, um, I'm going to present you the recent work of our group, Lurking Malice in the Cloud, Understanding and Detection Cloud Repository as Malicious Service. And this is work um, uh, finished by Georgia Tech, uh, Indiana University, and the UCSB. So special thanks to uh, my uh, colleagues, Xiao Jing, Sumaya, Lu Yi, Xiao, uh, Professor Wang Shuang, and Professor Bayer. So the first, um, the first challenge is the data collection. So we need a ground truth data set so that we can analyze the feature of the uh, malicious activities uh, in the cloud hosting service. So we use the uh, spam trap, uh, honeypot, uh, climax, uh, blacklist to get 100 verified bars. And uh, we also get 300 uh, legitimate repositories from uh, used by the top three top three thousand website in Alexa. So getting these bars uh, actually doesn't help a lot because as we have already uh, already talked about, the malicious actor can actually distribute these malicious content into different bars. So you only scan. And each bar individually would not be the most desirable to find these bars. So we are going to detect that in a more collective way. In order to do that, we need to generate the, the um, redirection chain of the whole uh, malicious infrastructure. So in order to do that, um, we use a tool called Common Cloud, which is a big data project um, that across more than five billion web pages each month. So we use that to find our targeted um, doorway page so that we can use our dynamic cloud to construct the redirection chain for them. So the reason we use common cloud is that um, the huge number of the existing doorway pages. So we need to do that in a more targeted way. So we suspect that um, for those doorway pages that use the uh, cloud repository before are more likely to use the cloud repository in the future. So we're going to find those doorway pages that use the uh, cloud repository before, and we are going, uh, we, are, we find a lot of them. Then we use the, our dynamic cloud to generate the redirection chain, and we f uh, search those uh, verified bars and the good repositories in the redirection chains, and we are going. Uh, we we find 141 websites are using them. That's our ground truth data set. So with such ground truth data set, we are able to find a few interesting observations. And the first interesting observation is um, we call gatekeeper. It's uh, in the infrastructure, there is always a node sitting in front of bar serving as the uh, intermediary to proxy the attempts to get resources from bar. So I'll give you an example. The left-hand side one is a uh, uh, redirection graph of a bar, and the right-hand side one is a legitimate case. So the solid white node in the left graph is the gatekeeper. It works as like a um, traffic distribution system. It 
uh, all the traffic goes through this node, and this node get to distribute the traffic uh, to either the bar to conduct uh, some malicious behavior or to another path to do the cloaking. And this case barely happened in a legitimate case because um, in, in most legit um, legitimate case, uh, the cloud repository usually serves as a third party library. So it's directly used by uh, different parties. So there would not um, occur a gatekeeper um, in the middle, uh, in, in front of the bar. This, the second observation is the uh, uh, variant of the first one. In this case, the bar itself serves as a uh, gatekeeper to protect those um, more important assets to the attacker, maybe a attack server or a malicious landing sites. So this is an example. And the third observation is the homogeneity in the uh, infrastructure. So that means uh, in, the, in the redirection graph of a bar, um, the, the nodes except for the bar, they share some common uh, content and network properties. For example, they use the same content management system or they use the same version of and the same uh, type of the web server. Um, this is because uh, the whole infrastructure is established by the malicious actor. They tend to use the same set of tools to um, build the infrastructure. However, in the legitimate case, this um, homogeneity is much weaker because the repository is used by different parties and there is no guarantee that different parties will share some same content and network property. So based on our findings, we are able to extract some features from them. So the first observation gives us two features, the second gives us one, and the third one gives us 15 because we classify the content and network property into 15 classes. Uh, so in total we get 18 features, and uh, I will not tell you the detailed uh, equation about those features, but you can always refer to our paper to look at it. Mm. The first three features we call topological feature and the, the rest 15 are called content and network features. So in order to see our feature actually works, we uh, draw this uh, CDF for individual features and uh, we are able to see there is a gap between the good set and the bad set. That means uh, using this feature actually can differentiate them. So this is the CDF of BUS and this is the uh, CDF of CR, and this is the LS. So um, we also calculate the F score of each feature to show which one is actually the best one, and we find that the um, connection ratio, it's called CR, is the best one, and in general, the topological feature is better than the, um, the content and the network features, but content and network Content and network features uh, has more in numbers. So to put things together, we got our uh, automatic system bar finder. So the system first using common cloud to get a list of uh, targeted uh, doorway pages. These doorway pages are sent to our dynamic crawler to get the redirection chain. Uh, so that we can combine them to generate the, the uh, redirection graph. And those graphs are sent to the feature uh, extractor, and the extracted feature are sent to a machine learning classifier to um, predict whether this is a bar or this is not a bar. To evaluate our system, we first use the uh, ground truth data set. We perform a five-fold cross-validation on that, and uh, we try different uh, classifiers. It gives us um, 94 precision and uh, 89 recall for an SVN classifier. Uh, next, we use the uh, unknown data set. So that is from one month's uh, data from Common Cloud, at, uh, and we are able to get one million websites. That's our um, that's are likely to use the cloud repository. And uh, we find 
almost 70, uh, 7,000 cloud repositories over 20 cloud platforms. So the system actually flagged uh, 730 buckets. So on these flagged buckets, we perform an external validation, and uh, we, we are able to validate 694. So this gives us a false discovery rate of less than 5% because those unverified uh, are just suspicious. They might be malicious, but we just cannot be sure. Now that we have proven the uh, effectiveness of our system, we're able to use that as a tool to help us answer the second question. What is the scope and the magnitude of cloud hosting abusing? Um, first, um, first is the overview of our measurement study. So we have 1,694 confirmed bars, um, and we find them uh, actually covers all the cloud platforms we find. That means uh, all the cloud platforms are suffering from the problem of cloud hosting uh, abusing. And we find, uh, let's say, a lot of doorway domains are connecting to, to them. And that means it has huge impact. And it's over 81 countries. That means it's global impact. Next, we. Um, measure its lifetime, and we find that um, those malicious uh, cloud repository actually have a longer lifetime than general uh, malicious website. Uh, you can see from the left diagram. So one reason they have longer lifetime is they use some very special um, evasion strategy. We find in our data set four different kind of uh, evasion strategies. The first is content separation. Uh, we have already talked about that. Uh, it's distribute your malicious content into different uh, cloud repositories. The second one is content change. That means the attacker constantly change the important content in the uh, in the cl uh, cloud repository. And the third one is the redirect um, cloaking. That is the case, um, you know, in, in the gatekeeper scenario. And the fourth one is the uh, obfuscation. Uh, that means the actor obfuscated the important uh, content in the, uh, in the cloud repository. And we also measure the lifetime of those um, bars using evasion strategies and those those don't, or those don't. So we find that this evasion strategy actually works well. There is a significant uh, increase in the lifetime. And in our data set, we find that um, Amazon's S3 has the largest number of bars. So one possible reason is that uh, we um, there is a actually a potential. Uh, to be compromised for Amazon S3 service. So we find this problem that um, with default settings, those Amazon S3 repositories uh, can be uh, listed, uploaded, and modified by anyone with a valid uh, Amazon S3 um, authentication key, uh, regardless uh, to whom this key belongs. So that means almost everyone can get access to this mis uh, mis misconfigured uh, cloud repositories on Amazon. So we find in our data set there are 472 repositories are misconfigured, uh, and 100 of 104 of them are bars. And actually, we manually examine the bars, and we find they are actually um, compromised instead of just malicious. So. This problem affects 1,306 legitimate websites, including some high-profile ones. For example, GroupRound.com. Uh, the cloud repository used by GroupRound.com has been um, compromised for a lot of times over a five-year span. And even though GroupRound uh, has fixed that uh, a few times, it gets compromised again. And so. That means um, this is really an, this is really a high uh, this is really a high impact uh, of this problem. Also, we find that um, we find there is a large campaign in our data set. 
So this campaign involving uh, 772 websites. So it serves um, potentially unwanted programs, including spyware, adware, and the virus. So the interesting part of this campaign is not just its um, size, its scale. It also involves a lot of bots, uh, actually 11 bots from three different cloud pl platforms. So the bots from Akamai served as the redirector, and the um, bots from Amazon S3 served as the repository of social engineering images, and the bar from CloudFront serves as the uh, repository for malicious or potentially unwanted binaries. <laughs> so we also find this um, campaign has a surprisingly long lifetime. Um, the reason might be the uh, evasion strategies they apply. They apply actually uh, three out of four evasion strategies we find in our data set. So in conclusion, um, our work uh, helps to answer the following two questions. So how to detect the, and collect the bots effectively? We use the targeted data collection method to collect uh, useful data for our system to process. And we use the collective uh, in, uh, infrastructure features because uh, individual bots may not be enough to detect uh, the malicious activity in the cloud hosting. So what is the scope and the magnitude of cloud hosting abusing? So we review its huge and global impact. We show that it has longer lifetime, which is preferable to the malicious actors. And we find they use unique evasion strategies. And we also find a few interesting cases. And that will be all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have questions?